In this tutorial, we work through a typical exam-style question involving the complex conjugate zeros theorem, also known as the complex conjugate root theorem. We're told that the complex numbers z1, which equals to 2, and z2, which equals to 2 plus i, are zeros of the polynomial function f of x, which equals to x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And we're asked two things. First of all, we're asked, what is z3? In other words, what is this polynomial's third zero? Secondly, we're asked to find the values of the coefficients b, c, and d. To get us started, let me move this question to the side. There we go. To answer the first question, the trick is to use the complex conjugate zeros theorem. Indeed, since we know that z2, which remember equals to 2 plus i, is one of this polynomial's zeros, we can go ahead and use the complex conjugate zeros theorem to state that this complex number's conjugate must also be a zero. In other words, since f of 2 plus i equals to zero, this implies or it tells us that f of 2 minus i, the conjugate, must also equal to zero. So we can go ahead and state that z3, the third zero, must equal to 2 minus i. And that's the answer to the first question. We now move on to the second question. Remember, we have to find the values of the coefficients b, c, and d. I'll just copy this polynomial function to make things a little clearer. We have f of x, which equals to x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now, the trick for finding the coefficients b, c, and d is to write this polynomial in its factored form. Since this is a cubic polynomial, it has three linear factors. And because we now know all three of this polynomial zeros, we can go ahead and write this polynomial in its factored form. Indeed, since we know that 2, 2 plus i, and 2 minus i are all zeros, we can go ahead and state that f of x equals to x minus 2, that's the first zero, times x minus 2 plus i, that's the second zero, times x minus 2 minus i, that's the third zero. All we have to do now is open up these parentheses and equate the polynomial we get to the polynomial we were given with b, c, and d. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll do my working in the upper right hand side of this page, up here. And the first thing I'll do is distribute these two last parentheses. In doing so, we find the following. f of x is equal to x minus 2 times, in parentheses, x squared minus 4x plus 5. And by all means, go ahead and press pause to check. But if you expand these last two parentheses, you should indeed get x squared minus 4x plus 5. Now that that's done, I distribute this first pair of parentheses across the second. And that leads to x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 2x squared plus 8x minus 10. All we have to do now is gather like terms and simplify as much as possible. And in doing so, we find that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 13x minus 10. And at this stage, we have an expression for our polynomial function. And so to find the coefficients b, c, and d, all we have to do is read the values of those coefficients in the result we just found. So b will equal to negative 6, c will equal to 13, and d will equal to negative 10. In other words, we can now state that b equals to negative 6, c equals to 13, and d equals to negative 10. And that's the final answer. And so that's how we can solve this typical exam-style question involving the complex conjugate zeros theorem. And that's it for this tutorial.